Uh, before we started, I wanted to share with you, uh, there is someone named Celeste, a friend of mine who has been watching this and has gotten really interested in this uh, this campaign. And she is a, oh my God, uh, I, I want to say landscape architecture student. And she has taken it as a personal project to uh, to start making... Uh, detailed maps of New Kamak based on old historical maps that we put out when this was a LARP and based on That's the new tight. version of the maps that we are using with uh, the tabletop version of this and some of the she's putting a lot of effort into uh, That's so rad yeah, into thank you, Celeste. Uh, doing like dividing up the city into, um, uh, into all the different regions that have been mentioned. Um, there's some illustrations. Wow. This is the uh, this is the haunted house area, for instance. Oh my god! There's this is like death's sanctum, uh, in the storm drains and like the bodies. Here is an as yet unintroduced NPC in a wheelchair. Um, oh. And yeah, a bunch of other fun detail. And uh, yeah, she's That's been cool. wow. working on stuff like that. And she just dropped off uh, some of these papers that she's been working on for me to check out. Well, thanks for doing that, Celeste. I assure you I put uh, precisely 0% of that effort into producing the content that you enjoy uh, so oh much. God. So. Thank you, Celeste. You have you have earned one star on your Archibald Alvin's punch card. Are we streaming this? Which I when so. you have no, we are not. This is just for us. Uh, when and when you receive ten stars, you get one bonus episode where you get to decide what we do. <laughs> Slash, you also get to become the GM for a day. And Graham gets to roll a character. <laughs> no, Celeste will just be famine at the end. That would be tight, actually. <laughs> um, what is the date in game time? Are we on April 30th? I believe you were right. Right now it's about 10 p.m. Yeah. on April 30th, 2020 in the game. I'm just now remembering that I did not do the journal entry, so I'll hopefully get that next time i think there's only like one long day of journal entries uh available mm -hmm. to you if uh if it's helpful at all i have a document uh just called game log that i think i shared with you guys but i can like send it again i think that the link might be in roll 20 or whatever but it includes it like the little summary blurb of every episode that i put into youtube and that'll maybe help refresh memory yeah i have my running document i just need to do my little i'm trying to remember where we left journal. off um that was a well, long the last one was a long long day that was several sessions yeah it was this uh, i mean at least that this is just from our last session i'm curious about the kind of notes that, back. that you take my notes are really extensive as well. I can't show them on screen. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> I have a whole whiteboard. I, I assure you. Um, Voluminous. I know, um, okay, the last sentence I have is Archie then asks if we can have Onion Jack's body back to bury elsewhere. I assume we're still at the funeral. No, I think no. we finished. We resolved that. We buried, we did bury his body in Darby's bed in the backyard. That's uh, that's <laughs> going to happen, though. We can. Oh, it's going. We can to kind happen. of fast yeah, yeah, yeah. forward through that. I think you uh, you told the prospectors oh, yeah. to meet you at Darby Manor later, so that can happen. And then I think the plan now is to go to Shed Town and look Correct. into the river situation. Cool. Uh, yeah, and my only other notes before I do like the intro is um, some unresolved things. Uh, Excava still has an alternate personality that needs a character sheet that I need to. I think like some of that work's been done. Uh, we should finalize that in case the alternate personality like pops up sometime soon, unexpectedly. Um, also, I found out that 
Uh, the the Christian idea of the rapture was invented by a guy named John Nelson Darby. Are you serious? I don't know what to do with this information, but whoa! I feel like there's something that is, that is a descendant for sure. Like <laughs> that is an ancestor, or or it's the same guy. <laughs> Some, it's the same somehow, guy. I have a feeling in 2020. That's <laughs> I have a feeling they were very different people, and that might not work. But I I saw that, and I wanted to throw that out there. Uh, no, nah, bro, that was me. He coincidentally, <laughs> he coincidentally also <laughs> penned the Blondie song "Rapture." I said, I said it's a rupture. I was misquoted. <laughs> it's just like one little volcano. He was talking about his farts being so bad when he would rupture, it would send everyone to heaven. They would ascend, if you will. No, I was talking about sex. Ah! It was definitely like sex stuff. When I erupture, then, uh... <laughs> then, 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 you're, then it's heavenly. Something like that. Anyway. Wouldn't that be erexture? Mm-hmm. I mean, comparing uh, that's, this that's what to I my other campaign, we're a, a way less sexy bunch, I must say. Well, let's <laughs> As work in, on like, that. haven't, what? like, done the deed in the game. <laughs> but in my other, in my D&D game, they're, like, participating in orgies and stuff. <laughs> well, sometimes, if the different. quest calls for it. <laughs> or, like, even just, like, a romantic love interest. Well, let's see how it plays out with Augustin and Teddy. Out of the lot of us, I've had the most action. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's been the most action so far. <laughs> All right, we ready? Yep. Welcome back to New Kamak. In the last session, Onion Jack's funeral took place, during which his brother Jasper revealed that he was the cause of the hot air baboon incident that not only caused Jack to lose all of his money, but which killed Avon Stank, the billionaire entrepreneur and inventor of Nukemac's MKT transportation system, as well as a mysterious craft known as the Stankwing that Excavo now has remote access to. Also, during the funeral, Augustine placed a curse on Jasper, causing everyone in his presence to absolutely despise him for the remainder of the night. At the conclusion of Onion Jack's funeral, Archibald agreed to bury Jack on the grounds of Darby Manor, with his body interred in the earth atop Darby's bed. Oh, Onion Jack's bed. Okay, yeah. Uh, what was you know once what? Darby's bed? Which, yeah. come to think of it, at Whole some point... The whole fucking house is still named after me, asshole, so whatever, it's all mine. <laughs> yeah, you're like, they're all my beds. <laughs> so Darby wouldn't know that this was promised, Darby might return. I don't know if we're going to like do that scene or just kind of like hand wave it away. But Darby at some point is going to go into his bedroom and find his bed just <laughs> no not problem. there anymore. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll resolve that when it happens. Oh, right. Because not everybody went to the funeral. Uh, yeah, Darby was the only one who, who uh, did not. So I'm interested in how they were going to get my bed while I'm just around. Uh, Maybe we should do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we all went back to Darby Manor. We we slept for the day, so presumably I'm just in my bed. And your first plan is like, all right, funeral time. Uh, we're gonna need this, and I am curious. Well, we oh. already had the funeral. It it is that the funeral was the next day, so we're all up. You were just like hanging out while we went. Mm-hmm. But again, I'm just very and then we told curious them to come back later that about night. the logistics of acquiring Darby's bed for this this so adventure. So Darby's at the house. Yeah, yeah. sleeping. We'll in do it. it when we do it. That's not I what we're doing right now. I can convince anyway. Darby he doesn't need a bed. That could be. I think uh, Archibald told the prospectors. I, I think you said like, "Hey, I'll call you when when." it's time for you to yeah. come over and dig a hole for us. So that can happen once Archibald summons them. <clears throat> uh, so uh, Augustine also used his ability to curse mortals, uh, which he's had this whole time, but just started using. 
uh, flagrantly in, in the last session. Um, uh, when out of pure petty spite, he cursed a random college student named Clark Manny, who had agreed to fight Darby and got consequently knocked out, but not before Darby agreed to come back to the same bar where the fight took place uh, tonight to tell Clark what he, Darby, was so angry about. That was a that was a grammatically complicated sentence, and I apologize for it. Uh, but uh, yeah, in summation, you told a guy you were going to come back to a bar at, uh, at some point tonight to to follow up on that fight that you had with him. Actually, out of curiosity, if he's still under the effects of that curse, isn't Darby going to despise the guy as well? Almost certainly. Technically, um, well, actually, the uh, the ritual that you used was it called Devil's Touch. Um, it is only in effect for the remainder of that night. When the sun rises, it's dispelled. So both Jasper Boggs, the prospector foreman, and Clark Manny, random dude at a bar. Uh, both I of thought you explained of- it quite the opposite way the first time, which was that it doesn't even sure go into that's... effect at all until the next day they wake up. And then it's all day. Um, that's, that's not what the book says, but we'll say that like for those two, yes, that is how that happens because it's apparently how I described it happening. Um, uh, but it, it, it starts at daylight, so it won't happen immediately. It's when the sun rises. Uh, so we'll, we'll say, uh, yeah, no retcon. It's all of today that everyone hates Jasper and Clark and, um, uh, we'll have the ritual j- do what it's supposed to do in the book for any subsequent uses of it. Is that cool? What's the name of the thing? Devil's Touch. Devil's Touch. Okay. We can we can say that for for this campaign it works the other way, but I think that it in the future it might be more useful to you if you can have it immediately go into effect and affect things like in this same scene that you're in instead of having to wait a day for it. So that, that's my suggestion. A okay. I appreciate the option would be to give you the choice <laughs> of when, uh, depending on each situation, you know, <laughs> that, I don't think that'd be particularly overpowered. I, I think it would just be, yeah, you'd have a choice of like this works it's now or this works now or tomorrow. Let's say for a thaumaturgy <laughs> master such as Augustine, using a low-level uh, ritual such as that, uh, he can, in fact, tweak it to be whichever of those those versions that, that he wants. I don't think either of those are particularly, like, overpowered or whatever. Most of the, like, antagonists in the campaign are not human, so it's pretty much just, like random fuckery anyway so you might as well just let them let them do it yeah air on the side of what's more fun <laughs> and expedient for the story uh so in the last session excavo used her ability to get the answer to any yes or no question while dreaming and got confirmation that there is a way to bring onion jack back to life leslie lane the local regent of the Tremere clan contacted Augustine with concern about the neighborhood called Shedtown. This low-income neighborhood on the south side of the city is home to River Erickson, the child of Jeremiah Cotton, who founded Camp Moonlight. River is suspected to have gone feral, as Shedtown is his hunting territory, and his ghoul, Feather McKenna, said that he began to act strange, and he disappeared about three weeks ago, around the same time that people began to go missing in Shedtown, and a body was found there, drained of all of its blood. Shedtown is also where the real estate agent Patty Buckmaster had Augustine clean up several basements where occult rituals had taken place in a pattern that suggests that the ritual's unknown effect was expanded from a single house to the entire neighborhood and that it might be expanded further. Leslie implied that he had discovered something strange in the neighborhood and suggested that Augustine uh, snoop around uh, and hunt while he's there and report back on his findings. But the specifics of what Leslie found, he didn't say. Um, Meanwhile, 
Leslie's presumably performing ghastly experiments on Terry Medic, the servant of the horseman Death, who was apprehended by our heroes and confessed that he and his brother were responsible for, among other things, magically locating vampires who had fallen into torpor so that their bodies could be collected and brought to the horsemen. The plan now is for the gang to summon the helpful Bruja Barry Bilson to accompany them to Shedtown to see if they can confirm Leslie's suspicion that something is wrong there and to search for River Erickson. Are you talking about Barry Bruja? Hello, Barry Bruja. I'm looking for the best Bilson. Oh, uh, yeah, that's me, boss. What's going on? We're going a hunting. Meet us in Shedtown in five. Catch you on the flip side. Hang ten another one for me. How far away is Shedtown? Uh, it is, it's across the city. Five so. minutes away. Is what? It's, um, you can get there in uh, 10, 15 minutes using the MKT. There would be a, a big oh. pain in the ass stopped train situation if you hadn't solved the MKT quest. But uh, you go across town and um, in <laughs> about... About 15 minutes, uh, you are in Shedtown, um, and you're kind of cruising around in uh, one of your vehicles. We'll say um, the the Escalade would accommodate all of you. And uh, you're cruising around, around a little bit, and you spot uh, Barry's pickup truck. And uh, you pull up right behind it. Everyone gets out. Barry gets out. Uh, so Barry says, uh, so Prince, uh, are we here to, to see if we can find uh, Eric? Uh, R- Eric Erickson, River Erickson. That's yeah, that's his name. We're looking for Eric Riverson, my good friend Barry Bruja. I felt you know, like that... I just went into like a weird Augustan cadence instead of an Archibald <laughs> one, but he's rubbing off on me. Uh, well, his place is just a few blocks down from here, so uh, so yeah, we we can head up. We can we can go in there right now. Uh, you want me to lead the way, boss? Absolutely. Augustine, do you remember where the houses that you looked into the other day were? Were they around this one? Andy does not, but... <clears throat> Did I say Andy? I thought I said Augustine. Yeah, Andy does not, but Augustine does with his eidetic, eidetic memory. Eidetic? <laughs> um, River's house is roughly in the middle of the neighborhood, and the houses where the mysterious occult rituals took place uh, were kind of spread out evenly around the the neighborhood. So uh, none of those houses are directly near uh, Barry's place. Sorry, River's place. Too many NPCs. Would they perhaps? Would it? Perhaps be like they are in a circle around his or something like that. I'm trying to work out whether the weird ritual that happened has significance toward the particular house we're going to. I think that you you would all have the intelligence and spatial awareness to be able to suss out the answer that like uh, a River's house would be contained within... If there was a circle drawn that intersects all the ritual locations, River's house would be inside of that circle. Not right in the middle, but in there. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so Barry starts walking up to the house. Uh, the house is a rundown one story building with street parking, a small stoop in front, a waist high chain link fence running around it and an overgrown lawn. Um, tall trees and bushes flank the property and block the view from neighbors. Uh, there's no porch light on and there are no street lights nearby. So it's pretty dark, but a light is on somewhere in the house. Oh, he's home. Weird that we've tried to find him for, like, weeks now. It looks like he's home, and our quest is finally over. <laughs> rap, rap a tap tap. Uh, give me a uh, perception plus investigation roll, please. Uh, difficulty five. I thought you were going. <laughs> I thought you were going to say do a knocking roll. <laughs> You miss. <laughs> okay. Not great, Bob. I have perceived and investigated. Hey, you got One three. success. 
No, it was difficulty five. Oh. Oh. Uh, you noticed dog shit in the yard. Quite a lot. Gross. Gross. Suggesting that he has a dog. However, you knock on the door. You don't hear anything. You don't hear any movement or any response uh, from from inside. Is Augustine able to, like, are all the windows shaded? Like, are they closed? Or am I able to, like, lurk around the house and kind of, like, get a peep through the windows? Uh, you can look through some of the windows. There are curtains, but you you can see through them if you like, if you really try. Cool. I, I generally snoop around and see if anything looks as though the house is inhabited in any way by anything. Um, you you look around um, and you spot... <clears throat> uh, actually, give me a, a perception plus investigation roll for this. Uh, difficulty also five. Am I still su- am I suffering any negative penalties for being injured? I don't believe I've healed. Oh, have I? Shit. Correct. You are still at uh, negative one dice pool, so take one die away from whatever you were going to do. Shazam! There you go. That is enough. Um, so you're snooping around, you're looking in the windows, uh, and you spot. Um, you, you go around the house, you're checking all the windows. Um, the, the back door has a window and, um, not, and you, you look through the back door and not far from it, you see a dog, uh, lying on its side and not moving and not responding to anything. Also, you go around, you look in a couple other uh, windows, and through one of the windows, you spot um, a body, what appears to be a dead uh, body, and it's it's a woman's body, so it's not Eric. Sorry, River. I'm going to keep calling him Eric. Um, Eric Riverson. <laughs> it's not Eric, nor is it River, who is an actual NPC. Um, so Eric it, Riverson. <laughs> It appears that uh, inside the house, uh, it looks like there's a dead dog and a dead person. It's just like lying uh, in, in a hallway. Okay, the dog was on its side, but not breathing. Like you couldn't see a, a chest rise and fall. With, uh, with that role, uh, I'm going to say like you watched it for long enough that you would know if it were alive. And the dog appears to not be alive. Okay, uh, I skulk back to the rest of the crew and, uh, comrades, I do believe this house is uninhabited. If were we to investigate further, we might be safe to proceed with intruding upon this vacant facility. Wait, Augustine, I want to try one more thing. It's possible he's in there, but doesn't trust us to open the door. Let me try this real quick. Hello. We've been meaning to reach you about your car's extended warranty. There's even less response now than before. That's nothing. <laughs> okay, we're we're going in. I thought you were going to make him use plants to lift you onto the roof again. <laughs> Wait, no, I have an idea. Quick. Lift me up. Vine me up, <laughs> boss. <laughs> uh, so as you're snooping around, you notice the front door is locked. But when uh, Augustine goes around back uh, and starts snooping around, uh, he notices that it looks like the back door has actually been broken into. It's slightly ajar, and the 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 wood in the the frame is a little broken. So you can go in through the back door. Do we send Barry Bruja in first? He seems like a good meat shield. While you're pondering it, Darby bursts through the door. Like there, <laughs> what's in it? What's in here? Shit! So, so Barry <laughs> thought that he was on point to like serve the the prince's advisory council and like be be that meat shield. So he starts walking up. And he's like, yeah, I got this, uh, Darby. You just like barrel past him, knock him out of the way, and. Uh, Barry responds to that being like, oh, okay, all right, we're going, all right. Um, and he's like, he's right behind you. Um, 
And when like you turn a corner, he turns the opposite corner and he looks in the room and he goes like, it's clear in here. Like thinking you're doing like a, like a rapid fire, like SWAT team, like a coordinated thing, which I don't believe you are. So Darby, as you run around through the house and just, you're, you're looking for movement. You're looking for like a guy that's going to like jump out of the shadows and attack you. Uh, You, you look through the house and you don't spot any alive active person uh you spot a total of four bodies uh that all look like they've been completely drained of blood and uh they look kind of old too like uh, some of them the oldest ones are look like they're maybe like two months old since they died uh the most recent one is looking kind of gross but not that old like uh like it died uh, like two weeks ago um but you don't like none of them appear to be vampires they appear to be drained mortal bodies and uh you end up in a bedroom and in the bedroom um there is a laptop with a red light on next to its webcam it appears that the laptop had a webcam that was recording video and that it's still recording yeah, so Darby's the only one that's seen this. So he calls us out. He's like, um, hey, this VCR's on. <laughs> I was trying to find a good place to say this, but Rivers Cuomo, more like Rivers Quandry. That's why I didn't get the Weezer thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw only only Kimber got it, but it, that was enough yes. for me. I just needed I just needed one. Oh, I saw them back in August. They're very good. I don't. I don't want to advance the plot too much without Andy on the call. Uh, we might be able to get something done. Fair, very <laughs> fair. I was just kidding. gonna mention that it, it's it, almost exactly ten years ago that me and a couple of buddies went on the Weezer cruise. The cruise, yeah, I remember hearing about that. <laughs> How is that? It was like a floating music festival, and it was fucking sweet. Um, oh my God. We had an, an awesome time. Uh, it left from <laughs> May, Miami, and they just played the Blue Album on oh. the top of the cruise boat as we were sailing away from Miami in on at sunset. And uh, Rivers oh just has a like a wireless mic, and he is uh, he like climbs up on uh, the <laughs> water slide and just like does a whole song, just walking around on this water slide that's off. Um, <laughs> It was nuts. Very rock and roll. And there were like 25 other bands, um, including one that we ended up hanging out with that later went on to be pretty famous, like decently successful. Um, Who was that? So, they yeah. Brought them. Oh, they... Uh, the Knox. They had no. a, pl- uh, a platinum single called Classic no. in 2014. <laughs> they opened for Justin Bieber on his European tour. Uh, huh. But this was their first album, and they were like a very low level group. Uh, we saw their show because they just came on after somebody else that we wanted to see, and they were sick. And we stayed and danced and had a good time. And they were like, "Hey, you want to just hang out with us?" And so we stood <laughs> up and played beer pong. And they gave us edibles. It was just like a magical moment. And then I found out that the guy that we hung out with like went to high school with like some of, some of the people that we knew and came with hmm. it was like a very small world huh. weird situation but anyway the the band was um the cruise was a magical magical experience and um glad that it happened that's wonderful weezer, weezer rocks throw up the w's and i vamped just long enough to get andy back good job <laughs> so everyone hears darby in uh, everyone sees Darby and Barry uh, charge into this house and start running through rooms trying to find like where the danger is. And uh, you you get the impression really quickly like there is no danger. There's no one, at least no one moving around in the house. Uh, everyone hears Darby yell about a VCR being on in a bedroom. And uh, presumably everyone joins him in that bedroom where it looks like... Oh, I absolutely 
get right in there. Yeah, it, it looks like this is River's bedroom. And uh, Excava, you look at the uh, at the laptop and you immediately ascertain that there's a webcam that is on and is recording. Oh, yeah, but I see that and I, uh, I, uh, I govern my face and I slam it shut. I'm like, nope. In the split second before you slam it shut, uh, you see a window open where it looks like a... Uh, a collection of videos had been recorded and saved by that laptop. Once uh, Darby surmises what has happened, that somebody knew that we were here and was expecting us, um, he starts looking around for, like, traps. He's still, like, fully cocked up like he was ready to get into a fight anyway, and now he's like, oh, shit, this place is compromised! And he's just, like, going full maximum military looking around for threats in the walls like it's it's fully reckless um well give me a Mm -hmm. perception plus investigation roll please all right not not my exact specialty this is of course something you can get others to to help you with no going going solo i i I figured Not even if someone were to offer. <laughs> oh, I know it's not like like metagame the smart thing to do, but it's what Darby is what doing. What he would do, yeah. Um, he would just start going. Let's, all right, so come on, Darby. Let's go! Mm, no, no. No success. Didn't botch it. So you, uh, you run around the house, um, and you are... Imagining all the places where there could be uh, surveillance devices, there could be things meant to harm you, and you don't find any, but that does not convince you that uh, there aren't uh, traps or, or whatever. It just makes you think that like either there aren't any, or this river dude is so diabolical that he hid them in a way that even a mastermind like you... Could not and that's when Darby finally asked for help. So he's like, all right, well, this son of a bitch, this crafty motherfucker. And so he explains what he's looked like. He's afraid that this whole place is going to blow up. Ah, because, before like, he asks me for here. help, I am always looking around for bugs. Barry, Barry does the same thing. Barry has the exact same dice pool as you for this. Ah, sweet. Let's go. So Barry rolls... Uh, oh, one success. yes, big time, Barry. So, so Barry, uh, eager to impress all of you, is like running through the house. He's got this like, uh, like eagle eye thing. He's like looking at all the corners. He's looking under tables and stuff. And uh, he uh, he comes back into the bedroom. He's like, I think it's clean. I, I don't, I don't see anything. I think it's just a normal house. Clean? Well, I found a bug, and I hold up a cockroach. Good one. <laughs> what? Oh. I thought we were looking for bugs. Catching, catching, oh shit, catching shade from Barry. That's harsh. So, um, if the laptop was meant to record you guys, it appears that it's the only thing in the house that was set up specifically for you. Have we actually looked at the dead body and, like, deduced what might have no. been the cause of death? Like, brutalized or mur- death by murder or death what's up there? Uh, death by murder. Death by murder. Just uh, first, uh, just making sure that there are no other active threats in the house first before we examine. At least that was what I was doing. The work that uh, Darby and Barry did um, pretty much... Sum that up, and Excavo, you look around and you confirm the same thing. And anyone who wants to do an intelligence plus medicine check on the bodies can do so. Uh, probably not. Me. I'm pretty sure that's my wheelhouse. You said intelligence plus medicine? Yeah, that would be four dice. Okay, four. Er, wait, no. What happens if you don't have a required knowledge? Hold on one second. I have I seven have dice on that. Medicine. That is su- super my wheelhouse. And then four intelligence. So um, it- is it just like plant medicine or? Plant medicine. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. You can't actually. If you don't have the required knowledge, you cannot make that roll. 
Oh, um, I can't even roll. Yeah, you can still, if you don't have the required talent or if you don't have the required skill, you can still do the roll. Difficulty is increased by one if you don't have the skill. But if you don't have the knowledge, uh, like you don't have a dot in medicine, usually that means uh, that you can't actually do the roll. Um, but go ahead and give me, uh, roll four dice anyway, just for your intelligence, just to... Who, me? Uh, yes, right. uh, just to to see if, if you can come up with, observe some obvious things about the, uh, the body. Uh, based on my intelligence... Uh, based, based on your intelligence, you spot pretty easily two big fang marks in the necks of... Uh, all four of the bodies. Darby starts looking around for snakes immediately. Just frantically <laughs> searching for snakes. Finds none, though there is a can of peanut brittle that looks awfully suspicious in the kitchen. Uh, Excavo, um, you you spot uh, the fang marks in their necks, and it does seem a little unusual to you because usually when a vampire feeds from from someone uh you can you can lick the wound and the wound automatically closes and it looks like you know they weren't fed from at all um and that's kind of standard operating procedure for for vampires so it it seems unusual to you that a vampire would feed from bodies and just not bother with that part but it could have something to do with the fact that you know all those bodies are hidden here in his house still it's not good like masquerade practice to do that so darby's still trying to sell the snake theory no snakes to be found yeah they left <laughs> <laughs> there are not snakes everywhere <laughs> <laughs> prince archibald your common sense tells you that there might be something worth looking at on the laptop. And if Excavo is concerned about uh, you guys being captured by the webcam, the webcam can be covered up as you open up the laptop. Excavo, you're a computer person. My common sense tells me we might find something of note on the laptop. Mm -hmm. So I want, to, I want to open it. I want to cover the lens. And I want to uh, hit Control Alt Escape to open the Task Manager and Ooh. quit whichever program is recording us. Uh, it's Control Alt Delete. No, nope. <laughs> Control Control Alt Escape directly what? opens up the Task Manager. What? A very handy set of uh, what? keys to know. You can you can try it yourself. Wait, wait. Do, Do it wait. right now. <laughs> Well, I, I have a Mac, so I literally don't have uh, those buttons. Isn't but it Command-Alt-Escape or something? Did they know. change it? I thought it was Control-Alt-Delete. Control-Alt-Delete brings you to like an interstitial menu on which yeah. one of the choices is the task manager. But if you what? want to skip that interstitial step and jump directly to the task manager like the old Windows used to do, when you would press yeah. Control-Alt-Delete, like if you want to revert to the Windows 98 behavior... Then you can do that by pressing Control Shift Escape. I feel like my entire, I feel like my entire life's been no, a lie. No, you're right. Control Shift it's Escape. It's it's you, you said right. it wrong before. It's Control Shift Escape, but it's it, yeah. yeah, it's oh very handy to be able to jump directly into the task manager. Oh, you know, no. I I actually remember so the day go. that I learned the keystroke for opening up the task manager. I think I was in high school, and Steve, it was you who told me about that keystroke. Oh, man. And I remember verbatim, you said, this is how the cool kids do it. And you were like, well, I was a geek squad when I learned. <laughs> I, I'm not wrong. It still still serves me well. So, uh, <laughs> Excavo, you open up the, the laptop, uh, carefully keeping your finger over the lens of the webcam. And uh, you see that it's, uh, it's one of those webcam uh, laptop dealies where there's like a slider and you can just like shut it over the webcam oh, lens. Great. So you do oh, that. Yes, I do that. So Darby before before she can, Darby doesn't understand how that works and just like smears uh like axle grease all over all Where over the lens. Grease? Just just <laughs> just like ruins it. And just like I fixed it. 
Um, Where'd you get grease? Oh, I assume Darby's just covered in, in grease at all times. There's something on Darby that he could just... ring out to get axle grease when needed. Oh my god. Like a hat or a handkerchief. Uh, handkerchief makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Like, a rag, okay, I think. I guess be. it's Yeah. I guess it's ruined. I'm still closing it. <laughs> oh sure. Yeah. It doesn't impede what you're doing at all. But I just Darby <laughs> smears grease on it first. You're welcome. Of course. <laughs> Excava, on your way to shut down the the thing that is recording a video, um, you you see that like in in an open window, uh, it appears that there's a collection of videos recorded by this laptop, and it's currently recording a new video, and it looks like the current video that's being recorded has been recording continuously for about two weeks. Hmm. It also looks like if you just like ended the program, it would very likely not save the recording that it's kept for the last two weeks. Heck of a hard drive. Yeah, that's the first thing Darby would be looking at. Like, wow, what what kind of storage solution do we have packed into this laptop? Two weeks of HD video? That's incredible. That's exactly what Darby was thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah pro- probably not, actually. Yeah, okay, I want to I want to hit stop on the recording. Roll for that? No, I just, sorry. Are you serious? You like, miss. <laughs> Women in STEM. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting the stop button. <laughs> Let's see how close you get. No. Oh, my God. Uh, so uh, you check out the recordings, and yeah. uh, there's, a, there's a collection of them. Um, the the earliest recording, uh, which starts two months ago, which is late February, before any of you came to New Um, those recordings show River silently. You see who's apparently River Erickson. He's a hippie-looking guy. It's like, yep, that's probably River. Um, and he's just silently watching himself on the laptop, apparently looking, like using it, as if it's a mirror to look into his own mouth and like investigate his own face. And he's like, like opening his eyelids and like studying his eyes from different angles and like, like looking at the inside of his mouth, like, like different, like, uh, and he's, and he's looking and he takes off his shirt and he's just like using the webcam as a mirror not not like a like a vanity thing, not like a flex, but like he has a look of concern on his face. Like he's like he's trying to figure something out and he he can't. Uh, like he's searching for something. Later recordings have him talking to the camera and documenting unusual experiences that he's been going through. He looks anxious. He looks restless and paranoid as he describes a feeling like there's something wrong with him. He keeps repeating phrases like, I can't drink right and I just keep getting hungrier. He describes a growing hunger that drinking blood usually, usually fails to slake and a feeling that he's slowly starving to death. He says, sometimes blood is just like water to me. And as the videos progress, he seems increasingly frightened. He explains that he's leaving his laptop on to record him sleeping during the day. Uh, It appears he starts using a video program that only records when sound or movement is detected and there are several videos showing him going to sleep in his bed, and then only occasional segments of video where his dog barks at something or walks into the room. And the final video, dated uh, April 14th, which was about a week before you arrived in the city, shows that he goes to sleep and then doesn't wake up for about two weeks. You see the time and date quickly jump ahead by hours and days as River lays still in his bed and his dog occasionally comes into the room to try to rouse him. Then the very end of this video reveals why River is no longer in the room. Cue dramatic music. In the video, you hear the sound of distant barking and a bang and a clatter reminiscent of a door being kicked in. Two gunshots ring out, 
and the barking stops. A couple minutes later, you hear the muffled sound of two men talking somewhere else in the house. Their voices sound familiar to you. As they approach closer to River's bedroom, you hear one of them say, there are so many bodies, it could be any of them. And Reply says, no, it looks like it's somewhere over here. It looks like it's in this bedroom. You hear them enter the bedroom and one says, I bet it's the one on the bed. You see two men in paramedic uniforms enter the room with their backs to the camera. One appears to be holding an object at chest level with both hands, and the other is carrying a folded up body bag. The first stands at the edge of the bed and slowly moves something back and forth over River's body before saying, yep, bag him. He sets the unseen object down on the floor and the other paramedic unfurls a body bag, which they then roll River into before carrying him out of the room. While they're gone, you can make out what the object was. The object was the jar full of some sort of liquid and the floating severed hand that the medic brothers had in their ambulance. A few minutes later, a paramedic walks, uh, it's Terry Medic, walks back into the room to retrieve this object, and the recording jumps to the present day when Darby enters the room. What happens next? Uh, Axel uh, what happened just now? That's what happened next. We're caught up. We have watched the series. Darby's staring at the screen in just like rapt attention. <laughs> so have we to date convinced any or do, uh, in our in our interrogation of Terry and Perry, did we get them to tell us where the they were keeping these abducted torpored vampires? Or did they just like vaguely well, say we, that they gave saw, them over to their lord? We saw a bunch of the body bags like in death's chambers, I thought. That is correct. Uh, you know that they at least slid Onion Jack's body into the uh, into the storm drain. Uh, and it got uh, sent into death's sanctum, as we're calling it. And while you were in there, you saw uh, several other body bags. On the video, did we see River actually like collapse into torpor? Then he went to sleep and couldn't wake up, probably because he wasn't. Okay, he went to sleep. Himself. Okay, yeah, yeah, because he wasn't getting blood. Yeah, or the blood wasn't nourishing him. Yeah, experiencing some sort of famine. You fr- took the thought right out of my brain. No! But... Darby has not made that connection at all, comrades. Do we reacquire our fallen query? What? Um, whatever. Uh, so- do, do we go to Death Sanctum <laughs> to, like, try and find a bag with his face in it? I'm like, whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, when he was looking at himself in the camera, did he see anything off? about his body that he was specifically concerned about or was he just like not finding anything weird uh you don't see evidence that he like answered whatever question he was he was trying to have answered he he's just like looking at himself like like the the stuff that he was saying and the stuff that he was doing indicated that like he was convinced that there was something wrong with him and he was Mm -hmm. he was trying to figure out what it was and he didn't figure it out hmm I would, I think Archibald is starting to connect some dots and he wants to see if he can find any of River's mail or correspondence, documents, so forth. There's uh, some mail in the mailbox. Is there something in particular? Specifically, yeah, specifically I'm looking for not necessarily a chess game but i'm looking for any papers that have the same kind of like strange scent that uh the original prince had been receiving from famine you that made him get all kind of weird too 
Uh, you snoop through River Erickson's mail, and uh, most of it is just mundane stuff. He has some uh, outdoorsy magazines that he's uh, subscribed to and some junk mail. Uh, the only other unusual piece of mail that you find is actually from uh, his ghoul, Feather McKenna. And it is a heartfelt note that says something along the lines of, I know you told me to not come around and that you'll contact me when it's safe. But I just want you to know that like I care about you and I want to help you. I don't know what's happening, but I'm here for you. You wouldn't answer your phone. So I'm writing you a letter like a cave woman. Uh, please, please let me know that you're all right. <laughs> Uh, but nothing that seems to be uh, like what what you're looking for. Okay. Well, I'm all out of leads. Uh, I suppose we should go pick up River from the Torpor Club. Um, uh, Augustine, you remember that um, the way River was talking about uh, like uh, like feeding. And being hungry reminds you that Leslie suggested to you that you hunt while you are in Shedtown. <laughs> I <laughs> thinking about it. That moment when I, I my brain doesn't know what to do with that information other than to be like, "Hey, is all this death making anybody else hungry?" <laughs> Always does. Way, but... You don't have to act on it. It's just a thing that you remembered just now. And we're not we're not actually technically in Shedtown, are we? Yeah, yeah. we are. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yep. Oh, okay. okay, okay. We're here. Um wait, can I also ask Barry a favor real quick? Yes. What's Barry's like actual profession? Does he have a job? Yeah. Do any of I... us have jobs? Uh, none of you do. Barry does have a job. I forget I have a if I it... have a fucking job. I just take from other people. Sheriff? I mean, you have like the sheriff <laughs> role. I no, mean, like, I, I, does didn't he have, I like, apply a to be a, uh, an assistant uh, or like an adjunct professor teaching night class oh, about how yeah. to repair cars or something? I have a real, honest to god <laughs> job. I reply to an ad in the paper. <laughs> that is right, and I'm a captain this. of industry. <laughs> I didn't remember that. Uh, yeah, Barry has a blue collar job. I'm I'm looking through. I think he he does like uh, like late night uh, like welding work for like a machinist shop or something okay. along those. That's those Who of us does it? Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> Barry, I know this is a bit below your pay grade, but as a from one brouha to another, I. Uh, could you please clean up these corpses uh, to protect the masquerade, please? Yeah, you got it. Thanks. You're the bomb.com. Do you want to come to a funeral later? Or, well, we had the funeral. Do you want to come to a burial later, by the way? And he turns around, kind of confused. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, if you need me to, boss. Yep, sure. Did you know Onion Jack? No, no clue who, who you're talking about. Is that is that a okay. a person or is that a kind of cheese? Yeah, uh, yeah, he's my best person. friend. He's a person. Well, actually, if you're looking for somewhere to get rid of the bodies, we might be able to just throw them all in Onion Jack's hole too. I never want to say the words Onion Jack's hole again. <laughs> With a mattress, by the way. <laughs> so Barry says, yeah. maybe if you can get it. <laughs> Fight him for it. <laughs> where is where is uh, uh, Onion Jack's hole? Onion Jack's hole's in our back. It, it's in our backyard. The back of a Volkswagen. But if you have like a better body disposal place for these corpses, since these are a little more of an under the table burial, that's fine too. Nah, I, I think that works great, boss. I just wanted to offer my hole to you. Uh, thanks. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, Anytime. I'll uh, I'll load these up in, from one uh, bruja to another. And he, he gives you the the bruja no the secret fist bump. hand the secret handshake. Yeah, what is it? Of course. <laughs> so he starts he starts rolling the bodies up in uh, in carpets and loading them into uh, the back of his pickup truck. Was it more like burrito style or fruit roll up style? 
Wait, what's the difference? What is the difference? Wait, uh, I meant, I meant, as sorry, sorry, sorry. I was thinking of Fruit by the Foot, which is a different configuration. So Still they're that... like swirled around <laughs> like, together? Yes, yeah, swirled oh. around, yeah. What? I'm going to say burrito. <laughs> Head I don't... feet just in a row and then you just... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he made a corpse Smart. burrito. Lovely. So I know I have all but one point of blood in my blood pool, and I'm pretty sure it didn't... Uh, Archie joined me in my dumpster orgy escapade. It, it was Jesus unsuccessful. Was I did not get any blood that night. Archibald is three blood short of being topped off. So he's hungry. Where's Darby at? Oh my God. I, I, I think I have at? a lot of blood. I have 19 blood. Yeah, uh, Darby has plenty, but can still stand to have uh, six more blood before he's full. No, I... So... Can I ask you about this? Because I, I think we got off track in the last episode. I had 15 out of 15 blood and then Diablerized somebody. I get your gained... argument. And honestly, I think that you're right about this one. So I drained their blood to uh... gain the blood point. So it really makes sense that I should go up to 20 out of 20 when I go up in generation. If I was full, I was full of blood when I, Diab- when I started Diablerizing. So it, th- that I would be empty to the tune of five blood when I'm done diabolizing is a ludicrous outcome. Well, I think the argument for you not being full is you are now able to get more. At- I'm just going to give you that. I think I think there's a stronger argument for you. You are full of blood again. I spent so, one point last time, so I have nineteen. I have nineteen on my okay. Machine. Nineteen. I- and I have 14 out of 15, right? Correct. Is that? Okay, yeah. That's what I, thought. I think everybody's blood pool is 15 now, except for me. Uh, Augustine lacks one, Darby lacks one, <laughs> Excavo lacks one, Archibald lacks three. Okay, so there's not really a practical argument for us to, for me to follow up on the suggestion that we hunt. No, it's just fun. Other than, I mean, it other is... than for me to be suspicious of the entire Chantry uh, and being curious about why they would want me to hunt. So I guess you could always get like Barry to do it for you. You can delegate. You know what? Put on an Augustine wig. See what happens. (laughs) Come on, Augustine. (laughs) Just get handfuls of tufts of grass and just like lick, just stick them to the top of his head. Is that how you do your hair? <laughs> I, was, I thought he was implying that he's always wearing like a ghillie suit, which I wouldn't I put mean, it past him. Yeah, maybe me a ghillie vest. <laughs> Come on, Augustine. It's Just like some ghillie shoes. A, it's a beautiful evening to dine out. The delicious shed town, shredded chicken, jalapenos, and Monterey Jack, all on a brioche bun. It used to be shredded chicken, but then they switched it. They nice. don't have the roll anymore. Not shredded chicken. Oh, are you talking about the Shedtown oh. sandwich? At yes, I am. Savages of Ale from, House. Uh, yeah, from Savages Ale's ha- Ale House. I, I it was my favorite that. menu item, but then they changed the the configuration of it. Now it's a grilled chicken breast instead of the shredded chicken. It just doesn't work the same. Doesn't hit the same. I like, can't. You have them it shred the grilled chicken. <laughs> You would think so, huh? I'm sorry to go so hard on savages right now. <laughs> uh, uh, Barry is uh, like going in. Like I said, there were there were four bodies. He is collecting them, coming back in and out. Uh, so so Barry does uh, cross your path in case you want to bring this up to him. <clears throat> I, you know what? I can't think of anything creative in how I would phrase it, but I do give him a quick, uh, an emphatic nudge and just like. Hey, I know we're asking a lot of you, but like, maybe on your way to check out this here burial, you could um, do us huh. a rock solid and like, huh. check shit out around here and like, I don't know, look at people and hunt a bit and, you know, uh, let me know what you figure out. Hey, um, get it? It's a general. berry, berry all. God. Damn it. That was the most normal Augustine <laughs> has ever sounded, so I feel like... <laughs> 
I feel yeah, like that's not what um, he actually said. It would be like very disconcerting if that's how you talk. I I feel like yeah, he would have been like, yeah, okay. I feel like you would have done it for sure if you asked him like that. He'd just be completely <laughs> confused. Like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Sorry, you look like Augustine, but. <laughs> uh, my, my I was hoping to have Augustine. I was hoping to have one-on-one hunting time with with my with my good buddy Augustine. You know, just a couple of brujas out on the shed town. More like brojas. From one broha to another, <laughs> you're an on. I know you're an honorary, but okay. I had a favor to ask. I was going to bring it up more naturally, but since you don't want to come a- a hunting with me. Very natural, sir. I, you know, I know you're more of a tomato guy. What are the chances we could maybe get some onions growing in the backyard? In the memorial garden? In the memorial, the memorial <laughs> onion garden. <laughs> I suppose it's fitting. It's called He's gone out to backyard, pass- not the backyard. Oh my gone God. out to uh, <laughs> gone out to pasture in the the beautiful Onion Valley. And with regards to your inclination <laughs> to hunt, I do suppose I could gather specimens of some variety or other. If you do indeed, sir, wish to indulge in this practice, wonderful. Let, I I'm a little parched let's go anytime augustine talks darby i think is now just like smiling and nodding just has no fucking idea what he is saying at any time um <laughs> what so what's me what are me and excavo gonna do yeah while well, you're gardening would you like, darby darby you is still up... like itching for a fight like darby is very could, uh... frustrated that there was no one to fight here and is like still want, wants to fight wants to scrap you guys could uh pick up river's body if we want to multitask go back to where the ambulance is and yeah i bet oh I sure bet our... let's split the party what's the worst that could happen I... <laughs> well <laughs> no that was that was Steve saying. It, it sounded started. like you didn't want to come with us, so I figured that was Steve. I figured that was like what you were getting at, since you didn't want to like come eating. No, I think us. that's just the natural outcome. Steve does not want this to happen, but Darby's just like, all right, yeah, sure, I'll go get him, whatever. And uh, you know, hopefully, I mean, I think our I think our benevolent GM will just make let it be like a quick like, oh, we got him. I mean, we'll see. I don't think he's going to make you fight death again. And if so, you have a special, you have a very special tongue. That'd be so fun. There's going to be a very lost and confused snake that's just left behind. Ah! Left I really, uh, that would be Can such a Can you speak parcel tongue with this tongue? <laughs> uh, so you, you, um, you do... Andy, the, ca- the we're camera. We're splitting the party. We're like, splitting the party. Going in and out. While you were petting Shimon was wild because your cat kept flicking in and out of existence. <laughs> Strobe cat. <laughs> okay, let's do things. Uh, do uh, do either of you uh, grab Barry and ask him to assist you, or do you just let him continue loading the bodies and bring him to Darby Manor? Mike, he's doing that. Yeah, I don't... Second one. Okay. Uh, Unless so, he wants to go go with you and get one more body. Yeah, what does he want to do? We keep giving him orders. Yeah, but... <laughs> true. What Nobody Barry asks doing? Barry what Barry wants. <laughs> uh, Barry's been given orders uh, to collect the bodies and get rid of them, and that's currently what he's doing. So, Barry, I've always been meaning to ask you, did your parents name you that just because they, lo- they love berries so much? Uh, no, uh, I was named after uh, my great grandfather, Barold. <laughs> Couldn't be good. Try to keep a straight face for it. Failed. Oh no. Barold Bilson. Barold Bruja. <laughs> oh god. Like how his canonical name has changed. It's funny, Barold a couple generations fun. back. 
the <laughs> the last name was Bruja on his father's side, but or his mother's side, but <laughs> his father's name was Bilson. Bruja is his middle name. Okay, so if uh, if we're splitting the party, I'm going to uh, to go to uh, Darby and Excavo first. Okay. You. So I'm I'm gonna say this um, because he came in one vehicle. Uh, the I'm gonna as, assume the agreement is uh, Darby and Excavo go to pick up uh, River's body and then come back and pick up Augustine and Archibald in Shedtown after they are done hunting. Yeah. Um, so you guys drive off. You go to the uh, the neighborhood where the haunted house and the Medic Brothers house is uh you slip down into the storm drain you see the scene just as you left it there is the body of the uh the tcu guard that uh was was there guarding it and got shot by thurgood uh shot and uh hat stabbed (laughs) by, by thurgood um in death's sanctum room there are the remains of uh mama and uh several zombies that got shot and (coughs) um you see three body bags you uh you open up one of the body bags and you see uh the uh, a very well preserved looking corpse of a long haired man wearing hippie new agey clothes and a medicine bag around his neck and moccasins. And uh, this is not River, it's a, a different hippie looking person that doesn't appear decayed at all, uh, though he looks like he has like some dirt on his body. You open up the <laughs> second body bag and you find it empty because Onion Jack's body was in it, but no longer is. Uh, or maybe I like you took the, the body bag. <laughs> I like the idea we didn't <laughs> take the bag. We took just the body. We just like, throw him over our shoulder. <laughs> shoving his body up out of the storm drain. Weekend at Bernie's like, style. I wish had handles. <laughs> no, no, we brought our own bag because it, it functions much like an Aldi. We bring our own from home. <laughs> you get the quarter bag. We always bring our um, own from home. You get the quarter So the, the remaining body bag, you open it up, and uh, it is gross inside. You see the badly decayed remains of a curly-haired man wearing a flannel shirt and jeans. Uh, you recognize... it. Is, he's terribly decayed, but you recognize the clothes as being what River Erickson was wearing when he went to bed and never got back up. Um, Darby and or Excavo, uh, please give me an intelligence plus investigation check. Can we work on this one together? Can we team up on this one? There's just, there's a weird Darby Excavo alliance, though I'm not sure if it's still holding up since I beat her out for that Diablery. She might be mad at. I kind of, I, I kind of think three. you do have to do this one separately because I don't. Okay. It doesn't make a lot of, yeah. So, so just yeah, roll. Excavo can roll first, and we'll see if it's. There you go. Yeah, that's plenty. Ten, seven, seven, nine. Yeah. There we go. Successes all around. So looking at this body, it is pretty badly decayed, and it's hard to make out any details. But you spot something unusual about the neck. Uh, you see fang marks in the neck of uh, the quite dead uh, River Erickson, suggesting that after he was abducted by the Medic Brothers and taken to this place, a vampire drained his blood and caused his final death. That's so fucked up. How could you do something like that? <laughs> What kind of a person? Uh, you hear Monsters. A- <laughs> Would they be able to tell if he'd been diablerized or not? Or if he was just drained? There wouldn't be any uh, any physical difference between those two. Because physically, you mm-hmm. drain all the blood out of someone. And the difference is, spiritually, you also drain the soul out if you're diablerizing them. Mm-hmm. Could I, like, 
could I see a soul like through an aura or something? Soul ch- vibe check. Vibe you, check. Uh, you would not be able to uh, use aura perception either way at this point That's what because I it, it would not have an aura anymore. Yeah. <clears throat> you hear a uh, a cell phone in the pocket of the body uh, chime like it just received a text message. Do vampires have fingerprints? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Sure. In oh, fact, they have okay. forever fingerprints. What? <laughs> oh, are you talking about for unlocking the phone? Yes, to unlock the phone. If there's a fingerprint. Um, do you do you pull the the phone out? I don't want to, but I do. I'm I'm morbidly curious. <laughs> Does this require a self control roll? No, I would do it. All right. <laughs> it's just happening. I would do it. You don't need an excuse to use a piece of technology. You you pull the cell phone out and you see notification. It is a text message uh, from Feather McKenna, uh, just saying that she misses him. I show Darby. She's thirsty. So is the person who bit him. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Who's Not you? anymore. People die around. Things die around me all the time. I'm used to it. Uh. I don't, I do not answer. I absolutely not. That would be silly. I just, just put it back where Can it you was. imagine if you texted back and you were like, yeah, I'm me too. I'm missing you too, Miss you too. <laughs> I'm like, je t'aime. <laughs> just like, mess, just mess with this girl. <laughs> Pretty fucked, honestly. Like, okay. So then that tells me, all right, she doesn't know. Like, people don't know that this has happened. Okay. Yeah, we we were supposed to, like, find a missing guy. I feel like Darby would want to text back as revenge for the ritual. (laughs) Or the initiation that we underwent at one point. Mm. That I just remember. Yeah, no, I don't like Feather. But I don't think, I, Darby (laughs) hasn't investigated the phone. He doesn't really know what's going on with the phone and doesn't really care. He heard the notification, he's just like, whatever. Okay, well, do you do anything else other than collect River's body and load it into the... Uh, Darby, like, uh, uh, actively searches this place. Like, he just doesn't want to come back here again. It's creepy. There was a snake here that he doesn't remember. He has, like, a weird phantom memory of snakes for some reason. And he just wants to, like, make sure there's there's no reason that we ever have to come back. So he is... uh, really searching as someone who's not here blake is just gonna give a shout out and say please take the other body back to the shantry so we can wake up that's what i was just gonna say whatever okay i was going to take the bag i'm like we're probably going to need this because that's like the hippie leader a lot of shady guy it's the guy who count uh founded it's uh it's uh river's daddy yes we keep him in the bag i want to take the empty one as well you want want both of them i put the empty one in the bag with him, fold it, put it in there by the feet. Oh, zip double, it. you double bagging it? You can do it. Yikes. Not like around. You can save, a, but just tucked in. You can save a lot of space if you do it fruit roll up style. Mm. Oh my mm-hmm, god, mm-hmm. what does that mean? Yeah, that that that, that works. That works. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I could scrunch it a, together. That's not how bodies. A spiralized work. body. <laughs> bodies work. Bodies work Does however strong you need enough. them to work. Yeah, that's right. Darby is working on a six I mean, dot of strength here. I think we can make this work. You could probably like... probably look about the same. You could toothpaste tube up a body. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what yeah, I was like thinking. That. Start that's with the I'm feet. Talk- that's no. what I'm talking about, yeah. Like a fruit roll-up. No! Or fruit no, by the foot. Or whatever. No, no, fruit roll-up would be long no. ways. I'm yeah, dumb. Fruit I by the yeah, foot. I Literally. I did it again. I keep mixing them up. Yeah. Well, I was with you on, yeah, fruit, on fruit, fruit by the foot, up, though, because you'd like you take them long ways. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no I want to go. Yeah, like bubble tape. Hot dog style, not hamburger style. I'm, I'm yeah. with you. When it looked like Archibald might uh, kill Augustine, uh, we were discussing like what what should the plan be if Augustine, if the character dies, final death. Ah. And one of the things that was offered to him 
was uh, that the the NPC of Jeremiah Cotton, who you've now seen the the uh, the torpid body of, um, it could wake up and it could be Augustine who plays Jeremiah Cotton. Uh, you you are free to to try to wake up Jeremiah and do that. Um, but uh, if you do not, then this this torpid body would be available as a backup character to play if that is an intriguing option for anybody. Thought it might be a fun character to play, but we can just keep anybody. him in our body collection. That's fine. Honestly, yeah. Just get, as, get him to the Tremere. Please, our, our collection of backup characters. The people at uh, at Camp Moonlight uh, were very traumatized when they found out that his body had been dug up and taken away. As far as they know, he was just a, a dude, just a mortal dude whose body, for some reason, was stolen. Uh, you also have the option of returning it back to Camp Moonlight. Leaving him dead and just <laughs> giving his corpse to his creepy followers. I Darby's not on board with that plan. It's noteworthy that uh, he is in torpor, uh, apparently voluntarily. The story is Jeremiah Cotton got uh, got shot in front of a bunch of witnesses by, I think, the husband of one of the people at the camp who uh, didn't appreciate uh, how his wife was involved in uh, this not occult, and. Uh, the reasonable conclusion is that since Jeremiah got shot a whole bunch in front of uh, a bunch of people, he had no choice but to fall into torpor and pretend that he had died rather than just shrug it off and break the masquerade. Did we learn who shot him? Uh, no, it was just described as uh, the uh, the husband of one of the uh, okay. uh, inhabitants at the camp. Yeah, I say we at least take the body... And just, and keep it in storage and decide what we want to do with it later. Yeah, so I, I want to finish searching the place and then we'll take both bodies because that's oh, yeah. what Excava wants to do. Oh. So this is what uh, you find. Uh, you have plenty of time to look around. Uh, you leave no stone unturned. And uh, most of the things that you find are uh, like laid out on a long wooden table. Uh, there you see an oil lamp, which is still lit. Uh, from the previous night, uh, though the oil is getting uh, down. Um, you find a large jar half full of uh, gross-smelling murky liquid. Uh, you find a severed hand just lying on the table, just a loose hand. Mm, mm. Uh, you find an ornately designed golden dagger stained with blood. Uh, you find a half dozen rolls of dirty cloth bandages. You find rolls of parchment with, uh, to you, indecipherable scribblings on them. Uh, you find the apparent ingredients for two more glass vial necklaces, like the one Pestilence was wearing. Uh, but these ingredients are scattered and uh, not assembled into these uh, the, the pendants. Uh, but it appears that the one that Pestilence was wearing, that Darby then used to cheat death, uh, was assembled right here by death. Uh, you also find a map of the city's storm drainage system with two spots marked. One is this room, and you recognize the other as the intersection that you took to get into the Nosferatu tunnels from the drainage tunnel tunnels under Nuker Tech. And finally, you find a burner cell phone with one phone number programmed into it and a history of several calls between it and that number. Hell yeah! Oh, and the number is, uh, it's uh, identified as being Perry Medic. The uh, Darby, uh, like, equips the dagger, like, the hooks dagger, it to his yeah. belt, uh, takes that, and... I don't really think there's anything else he would have like grabbed for himself, but I think he just kind of kind of collects everything. If there's like a any way to con contain it or you have wrap a body bag, up. a free yeah, body I think, bag I, to just I think he st I think he stuffs pretty much everything that'll fit into the body bag and brings mm -hmm. brings it all. 
There's also Mama's body. Oh, we body. have an empty body bag. We can put it all in there. That's yeah. That's what that's what Graham suggested. So that, that's that's <laughs> what that's what Darby has done. Uh, and the only other I things that might be of interest. The phone, though. Uh, oh, the burner cell phone. Yeah, yeah. I want the phone. Okay, Death's phone. Uh, and the only other things that might be of interest to Darby are. Uh, there are the bodies of the zombies and the body of Mama and the body of Wally. Yeah, you know, Darby doesn't really take trophies. I don't think that's, that's his vibe. <laughs> that is demonstrably false. Wait, what? What trophies does he have? Didn't he? He, uh... What about that one took, from Bowling? Maybe I'm thinking of, like, material things. Uh, like, two well, he necklaces. Earned that. Two, two necklaces so far he took as trophies from, uh, from slain horseman he he thinks these the the, well, the first one brought him back to life like now he thinks they're all magical like this is not this is not a trophy thing every this necklace is, like, is magic he and and the the thing that he stole he thinks he has an extra life again <laughs> so he is convinced that he cannot have final death <laughs> while he's while he's wearing this thing whether that's true or not so oh, th- this is it's not a trophy thing at all it's very much like I expect this to be a like a magical talisman. It worked once; it's got to work again. After acknowledging that when he put it on, all of a sudden he was able to see and communicate with ghosts, he thinks that in addition to that, he is also he has an extra life. Correct, one hundred percent. Which might be the case. It's it's not been proven one way or the other. Uh, cool. So uh, is that it? You uh, roll everything up, yeah. and you start we pretty much just shutdown? we ransack the place, take the bodies, take the loot, get out, load it into oh. the back of the Escalade, and drive home. D- d- drive and pick the other guys up. There. Uh, so the the bodies. Uh, there's a body of uh, Wally the alligator, Mom of the bear, and uh, three zombies and one uh, mortal alive dude. They got killed, like, just outside the sanctum. Uh, do, do you mean you pick those up, too, or do you leave them where they are? No, just the... Um, River? The two that were in and the body bags. The Rivers, River's desiccated body and the, the hippie guy. Jeremiah Cod. Okay, uh, so you awkwardly get everything up onto street level, load it into the car, start heading back to Shettown. Uh, in Shedtown, um, Archibald and Augustine, uh, let's say it is about 11 o'clock at night. Uh, you can find some people like out walking around. Um, pick a, uh, pick a, a dice pool, uh, an attribute plus ability combination reflecting your strategy and give me a roll. Um, this is a fairly easy place to, uh, to feed at. So I'm, I'm going to say uh, difficulty four for this. So let's go uh, with Archibald first. What's your, are uh, you just, if you, if you're just sneaking around, it can be uh, dexterity plus stealth, um, uh, which you, have no stealth but yeah what's your uh strategy just find someone in the dark and run up on them or keep it simple personally i prefer the idea of using charisma and occult uh and anyone who's worked anyone who's worked third shift at a gas station knows the freaks come out at night it's awesome uh, and I jovially greet anyone who will listen and not flee uh, as they pass or come near me and begin insanely rambling about the mysteries of the dark void above us and that surrounds us and uh, generally attempt to lure them into dark crevasses wherein I might uh, peck some blood off them. All right, please roll uh, six dice for me. Difficulty four. Yeah, you got it. Jesus. Oh, that's that's slot Ooh. machines. Holy shit. All successes. Ding ding ding. And uh, uh Archibald. Um <laughs> what is uh your strategy? Something similar but leftist political theory <laughs> instead of occult ramblings? Um no, so my strategy is that I'm across the street from wherever he is and <laughs> 
I'm also using charisma, but I'm just telling people, wow, get a load of that guy. The freaks are really out tonight, <laughs> huh? <laughs> and I'm luring them into a conversation with me making fun of Augusta. <laughs> um, so I guess charisma and would it be expression or I could see streetwise? I was going to say empathy. Or, I don't know. Charisma and empathy. Empathy. Uh, sure. So please yeah, roll like that. five dice. <laughs> difficulty four. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about how... Um, I'm talking about how our city really should do more to prioritize uh, mental health care for its citizens. That is two successes. I was going to tell you, one of my buddies, buddies in, in college and after college, we essentially, um, you know, would talk to girls with the same strategy that you were just describing <laughs> for feeding. This is this is Patrick Graham. Uh, you actually know this person, but um, generally, and I'm a very like bombastic personality. People either really like that or they really don't. And if they didn't, Patrick is not like that at all. And he yeah, would just like make fun of me and be like, "I can't believe he's being <laughs> such a loudmouth asshole." fuck this guy, right? And they'd be like, yeah! And then he would, like, so of all people, we could find <laughs> some some common ground between either That's his, his approach or oh my gosh. Oh it my worked. God. I mean, it was, it was pretty, <laughs> we had a, a pretty comprehensive Venn diagram. Okay, so due to the particular strategy that the, the two of you are using uh, for feeding, <clears throat> both of you feed from a victim at uh, roughly the same time. And um, uh, when you when you drink blood from a human, uh, it is a uh, a rapturous, euphoric feeling. It's not just that blood tastes good. There's something that that feels like deeply fulfilling. Uh, it feels like a drug. Um, it's something that that happens all the time whenever you feed. Uh, if you feed from uh, if you for some reason drink vampire blood, uh, it feels even like even greater you really feel that like someone else's life force is going into you and you're absorbing it and it's uh addictive it's a very powerful feeling you feel the blood like flowing down into what used to be your stomach and you feel your life force being sustained it's a really big deal uh, that is to say that is what feeding has always felt like for you up until this moment both of you experience the same thing, which is you grab someone, you sink your fangs into them, they experience the kiss, as uh, the Vampire Masquerade canon calls it, where they just kind of like collapse and they're overwhelmed with ecstasy and they can't fight back, and you start drinking their blood, and it... Have you ever been really hungry and you want like a big satisfying meal, like a burger or something like that. And instead all that you have available is those like, uh, like puffed, like rice cakes that are basically just air, just edible air. How close to the edge of this stupid fucking doom circle are we? Oh, you're both in it. Yeah. But how close mm -hmm. to the edge? We're in it. Like what I could, I reasonably walk to the edge of this and try and feed again outside of the circle i i would be careful if you take one step closer to the edge you're about to break you're about to break god yeah. damn it <laughs> um you uh yeah you of course could walk out of the bounds of the neighborhood and and feed again but but what happens is um you are feeding and you you are definitely like sucking blood out of this person and you were swallowing it but you like don't feel it arrive in your stomach analog all of your organs have atrophied you don't really have organs but like you you don't feel yourself getting filled up by it it's like you're just drinking air there's no feeling of like your hunger being sated uh, nothing like this blood feels like it is somehow disappearing as soon as it passes through your throat you've never experience anything like this before when you're feeding and it's deeply unsettling how how do the people react 
the, the, same, the same way, way they, they okay, always good. do. As soon as your uh, fangs go in, they kind of go limp yeah. and they get groggy. And cool. they're not acting any different. I was worried that that effect would be gone and we'd have a real problem on our hands. Okay. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? Ah, fuck. Right on. So <laughs> like Augustine is thinking, I'm just like, okay, clearly this is what happened to River as well. It was in his territory that the ritual happened, so that makes sense. But also, I'm thinking, A, we need to check outside the circle like he is, and B, I am worried because my headcanon and fan theory is that she is trying to do this in the entire city or worse, the world. That would be a big problem. But the world is a vampire. <laughs> Which is why this, yeah, that would be a very dangerous outcome. My fan theory that I write about on the New Kamak subreddit all the time is that the MTK is also a, a spell circle. And I, I think this because I am a fan of Full Metal Alchemist. Aha! So do we uh, do we dally to the outer rim of outer this rim. doom circle and try try the same tactic since we got a rhythm? Yeah, going let's head on. right over to Tatooine and get it get it going. Uh, you had just <laughs> out, flawless out, outer rim. <laughs> little outer rim joke for you. You escape the wretched hide of scum and villainy, which is Shed Town, and uh, you go just north of it where. Uh, the the vibe changes, we'll say, and uh, you put a little bit of time into finding another couple victims, and uh, both of you successfully feed and find nothing unusual well, about good. that attempt that to uh, to feed from those people, and both of you have your blood pools topped off. So the good news is, we figured it out. The bad news is, fuck. (laughs) Indeed. So, uh, so unless if we want to resolve uh, Onion Jack being buried, this might be a good point to uh, to stop tonight's session. Uh, What do you think? I think. I think we're good. We can start with the funeral confrontation next next time. Sounds good. And also reconvening and having Augustine and Archibald explain their discoveries to... Yeah, both of you can just swap intel. Go team. Cool. Uh, what Cool. What do we think about how this session played out? I think it's good. I mean, we have... It's interesting. We have these, like, uh, moments of build up we talk about like the big confrontation with death or whatever and then we have a lot of time where we're just like filling in the blanks you know investigating learning and this was one of those but those are just as important and fu- fun for different reasons you know i don't we're sleuthing. Uh, yeah exactly so i it's a very like get a to b type of uh type of sesh but um you know that's that's part of it I, I think it's good to, to check in. Would you guys like more sleuthing and like puzzle solving and like mystery stuff? Or would you like more combat? Is there any like like type of gaming that you would like to see more in the coming sessions? I feel like... Can we fight our way through a puzzle? My my instinct my my in- initial reaction to that question is that I like the balance that you've struck. Um, combat takes a long mm-hmm. time, and so I'm glad that we don't do it very often. But we have two characters that are very like strongly oriented toward combat, so we have to continue to you know face challenges like that. I. I I don't have any any notes. I think you've done a really good job of like oh, cool. mixing it up, and and I, the reason that works is because you're always asking us what we want to do, and so if we're like you know I'm itching for a fight, let's go mix it up, then you let us do that, and if we're like I want to try to figure out who this is or where to go next, then you let us do that too. So we're just like I don't know. What do you want to do? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's working pretty well so far. Yeah, I think we we just had like a really big confrontation and it was 
like quite a few sessions of combat against death. So I like that we now are kind of like building our way towards the next thing, picking up some clues because we have presumably two more major confrontations like that. At least. But I feel yeah. like us finding them and like fi- puzzling and, and figuring it out makes it feel like those confrontations are more we've earned them because we've And I want to give you some breathing out. room in like there there are a bunch and, of things yeah. that that I, I think that each of you would like to accomplish if you just had like some free time and that's something that we can do at at any point like i, I want to uh like reassure you that there there will be an opportunity to just spend like a day or even a week just accomplishing various things you personally want to want to get done uh like establishing or exploiting relationships is with other npcs in the city or like setting up stuff and that like uh that wouldn't you wouldn't be missing out on anything like the the plot would allow for you to like kind of live your life and pursue personal goals without like oh all this stuff happened while you weren't paying attention and now you lose yeah i think it would be helpful for us if you from a storyteller perspective built in that pause like there's this thing that's going to happen in the future and until that like we're kind of in a holding pattern and can't really do anything like that hasn't been the case. We have all this urgency and all this stuff that we can do and that we need to do right now because it's like an imminent threat. And so until that isn't the case, I think we don't really have much of a choice as to just go from threat to threat day after day. So like if, if we're going to be able to take time, I think you got to give us the space to where that doesn't feel like a dereliction of duty. I feel like we do have that in that we, we do have a few days before the big chess game the chess match yeah for sure yeah it is currently thursday and that chess match is gonna be on saturday two days right but he needs to practice playing chess (laughs) i don't think archibald needs to practice playing chess Mm. oh okay i don't know if that was a burn from that's a pretty good one well one of the special (laughs) Uh, one of my specializations is games of strategy. Oh, and shit. I and I wrote games of strategy because I'll I thought be chess was too granular, but it's it is your chess specialization. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, be assured that like currently there there aren't any. Uh, as far as I remember, there aren't any NPCs telling you that like you you have to take care of some problem right now. Uh, Augustine is being nudged by the Tremere to do stuff for them, and he's going to continue to be nudged by them. But um, you would get the impression that uh, basically as soon as Augustine maybe like reports back to the Tremere, um, there's uh, like everyone else is kind of like leaving you alone for the moment. So. You can spend time just working on your. Well, own we got to go back stuff. to the Tremere anyway to drop off our new, our new body in a tank for them to keep in their basement of horrors. Oh, um, okay, we can leave that for next time. Next mm-hmm. session might be since we have that, and we have the uh, we have the burial. But it might be a nice time to do. Didn't we at one point have an episode where we all went off on like a, yeah. a short little mini adventure? I think that's what I think that's yeah. what Graham is trying to set up for the time yeah. in between um, Thursday yeah. and Saturday. Yeah. That that we can sort of yada yada the inter- interstitial space and make up our backstory for what we all did during that time. Yeah, that'd be time. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, like Augustine. Could be working with the Camp Moonlight people who he said he would help them like grow their like pot and vegetables and stuff. And like maybe they would then be uh, they would owe him a favor. That'd be cool. Um, there's uh, uh, all, I've got all a sorts of, of phones to go through. <laughs> yeah, there's all sorts of stuff that Excavo could be doing with all of her, her hacking ability. Uh, so yeah, I that, think I told Marsha that I would come and figure out some stuff with the business as well. Oh, and yeah. Darby was going to meet up with Clark again and have a conversation with him. At least he said that he was going to. 
Oh yeah, Darby so it seems Foley like we all have some little yeah. we have some little activities built in. So that'll be for, that'll be for next time. Awesome. Nice. Uh, well, uh, we can uh, spend experience points if you guys can think of anything you want to spend them on. Archibald, you have nine points that you can spend. Okay. Um, uh, Augustine, you have 28. You're going to save them for... We've built up at this point quite a large selection of um uh like proposed new alternate green path powers that aren't just like level five but like level two b uh, stuff like that um so like those I'm are particularly available to fond you of two specific options right now um out of the ones you presented of extravagant uh green path powers uh, I am a big fan of the Fungalmancy. Fungalmancy. Um, I definitely didn't come up with that word because I'm not that clever. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that one's pretty pretty hack and dope. Uh, but I'm all, I'm torn between that and um, oh god, what's the thaumaturgy that's like flesh thaumaturgy? With all my torture shit going on, like bio thaumaturgy. Ra- There's a discipline that's like flesh manipulation vicissitude oh that, right 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 so that's, that's not thaumaturgy that's not thaumaturgy um, there is something called biothaumaturgy that is um you can uh okay, first level um you can take living or dead tissue samples and like magically gain information about supernatural creatures second level um you can thaumaturgical surgery you can convert a level of damage to a lesser form like aggravated to lethal or lethal to bashing a third level lesser animation you can animate dead plants and small animals that will follow instructions level four greater animation you could do that on large animals and dead humans fifth level just necromagic what fifth level is called cognizant construction and it's basically like frankenstein's monster you can uh you can grant an animated creature including an animated dead human rudimentary intelligence that is biothaumaturgy anyway i don't know if that's what you were looking at but that's a thing uh no i think you're I, I, this is too Okay. I think uh, Darby's correct. I was thinking of uh, an idea I had way early in the campaign where I was like, what if I started blurring the lines between humans and plants and I made some really tortured hybrids of them? Um, wow. Given my lead up in my character development so far, that started to make sense again. But uh, I think I'm going to go with Fungal Mancy, man. Fungal. Now, is that the one that we called... Uh, okay, Mycological Mastery where you have power over the the fungal spores that coat everything yeah i will, I will read uh, that and and make sure that we're on the same page <clears throat> i called it mycological mastery fungal mancy is fucking way better the caster has power over the fungal spores that coat virtually every surface on the planet targeting any surface that he can see he can create a thick coating of mold or a growth of mushrooms that is under his control for the remainder of the scene the size of this growth is a number of square feet equal to twice the number of successes on the intelligence plus cult roll between uh two square feet and ten square feet the growth can be commanded to move at a rate of one foot per turn and perform physical actions with half of the caster's attributes and abilities rounded up. Removing this growth requires a strength plus athletics or melee roll the difficulty equal to the caster's willpower. The damage pool for any attack is always one plus any bonus successes. I think, no, this there's something else that I suggested where you, where it does damage, where the, the fungus, like, uh, decomposes what's under it oh yes that was called decompose um which is almost the same thing uh except um uh it can do one level of aggravated damage and rot up to one square foot of inanimate material to dust 
Um, and depending on how many successes you get, like your targeting is more or less accurate. Uh, you are immune to this power unless if you deliberately will otherwise. Um, and the amount of damage inflicted by this power and or the total volume of inanimate material decomposed can be multiplied by spending willpower points. So that's the version of it where you can do aggravated damage to a character or you can just start to like melt inanimate material. Okay, that 100%. Yeah, that's that is a uh, sick. That is absolutely what I'm going with cuz I otherwise have very little combat ability. But that that's brutal. I love that. So we called that uh, decompose. I said that uh, that was a four dot power because that was roughly around the same power level as other combat oriented thaumaturgy things that were at like the level four uh, level. Um, to get that, you would have to spend it's level four. So that would be 15 primary hmm i think this would this would follow under like the secondary path rules so that would be 12 points that you would spend to get that and that still leaves me with 16 points i'm i'm super down with that let's let's go with decompose wow well we have our first home brewed power in the game so fun it's exciting and terrifying <laughs> um and you will be able to just make things start disintegrating uh due to your mastery over uh uh fungal spores which is uh an absolute nightmare uh anything else or did we cover in the last i think it was two episodes ago did we say that it was 12 points to get uh my fourth point of charisma fourth point of charisma would be uh 12 points yes Oh, no, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Ooh, you know what? I'm actually going to hold on to the last 16, because that puts me two sessions away from being able to pick up a second path of thaumaturgy anyway. Mm, Dope. Smart. All right. Um, Darby, you have five points. Yeah, I, I'm saving up big time. I think I'm trying to get my sixth dot of strength, which, if I'm not mistaken, costs 20 points. Woo! Um, I'm also kind of interested in maybe some sort of strength fortitude combo power. If we can start thinking about that, maybe a, uh, like a Sherman tank type of thing where I can run head first into things. I don't oh, know. God. <laughs> like I can, I can like use my hat as a, you know, like some, some sort of torpedo <laughs> Ted power. I think would be would be really you scream fun. Scream torpedo Ted as you run headfirst into a. But no, my my intention is to save. I think I got my third dot of fortitude last time. My intention is to save for dot six of strength, which is going to take quite a while. Um, the Venture Clan does not have any fortitude and potence combo disciplines, but there are other combo disciplines that fortitude you could. Strength. Um. Well, the combat disciplines are a combination of two different disciplines. Uh, there are some that you could shoot. I've for. I've looked at the existing ones. I was talking about something something net net new. Oh, making no, okay, yeah. yeah, we can none of the something. none of the book none of the book ones are that are that exciting. You're thinking like I'll, a I'll Leroy just, Jenkins. Oh, stuff up. Yes, I was thinking about some sort of potence fortitude combination, or even maybe like a potence fortitude celerity, like a weird Tasmanian devil uh, com- <laughs> combo thing. Because Darby does have a pretty strange collection of physical abilities. What clan has potence and fortitude? We we could let you take a combo discipline from a different clan. I want to say Nosferatu? Uh, that doesn't sound right. Mm. Uh, I think they have obfuscate. Oh no, they have animalism, obfuscate, and potence. So I don't know if anybody has potence and fortitude. Hmm. Darby's just weird because he keeps collecting strange out of clan disciplines. Either way, not something we need to figure out anytime in the near future because I just don't have that many experience points, and it's going to be a while. Cool. Uh, Excavo, you have 
two experience points, which... Oh my goodness, don't spend it all in one spot. I think <laughs> you can spend them on... Um, you can, <laughs> if you have any ability that is that only has one dot, you can get the second dot of that oh. ability. Okay, if, all right. So it's three for a new ability, but then it's one times current level for subsequent so dots. T- two times current the, level, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Two, two yeah, okay. It goes three, two, um, four. It's just so dumb how it does that. The, 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 yeah. It makes sense to me that it's harder to get a dot of something that you don't have any dots in. It's harder to learn something anew than it is to improve upon it. Like, I, is it, I is figure it like the, the Dun, is it like the Dunning Kruger? You know, you're just like something yeah, like that. It, it, easy, easy to get into the valley of despair, and then more <laughs> challenging as you work your way up. I could get a second dot in investigation. I that was just looking at that. that is right up my alley. Very useful. Yeah. Yeah, I want to do that. You could, in fact, you were just doing some investigating, and now you have a second dot of investigation. Perfect. Cool. Well, that is it for session 36. Let's do it again soon. Yeah, I'll keep you guys posted as we're available. Love you guys. Have a great night. Love you too. Oh my god, I gotta pee like a resource. Oh crap, and I said that while I'm still recording.